again everyone. Firstly I'd just like to say a really big thank you to everyone who's subscribed to this channel. I really appreciate your subscriptions and also the great comments that I've had. It's been really good to interact with you. This video is all about being lost in space. If you're relatively new to astrophotography and you've got a go-to mount, you may already have experienced this problem. It's a really nasty one, you can feel really stuck by it. Uh, so this is hopefully a helpful video to tell you about one solution to being lost in space. So let's start with what being lost in space is all about. Imagine you've just set up your mount, you've balanced it, you've polar aligned it, you've put it in the home position, you've switched it on, and then you slew to the first alignment star. And you do that, and what happens is that your camera is not quite pointing at the alignment star, and if it's off by enough that you can't see that, that alignment star in the actual picture from your camera, you're really stuck because you don't know which way to move the mount in right ascension or declination to get the, the bright star, your alignment star, to be in the field of view of the camera. In this case, if I overlay the right ascension and declination lines, you can see that there's a movement in declination and in right ascension that's needed to put that guide star or alignment star, sorry, uh, into the centre of the camera's field of view. But of course, we don't have that that grid in front of us. We're just not seeing a bright star, and indeed, we might be over here. It might be a long way off, and actually. It doesn't often make that much difference whether you're close or off. If it's not in the field of view, you're stuck and you don't know what to do. So the solution, uh, or one solution to this, which is really a great one, and I, I personally uh, was saved by, by doing this, was to get, to get a tell rad. So let's just start with a little bit of the physics of what's inside a tell rad. What is a tell rad? So it starts with a red LED powered by a battery and uh, there's a variable resistor so you can turn a knob and adjust the, the brightness of the red LED. And that LED shines through a graticule which is just a thin sheet of plastic material that is mostly black but it has some clear concentric rings uh, printed on it. And that then projects three red rings of light onto a flat mirror that's arranged at 45 degrees. That reflects the light upwards through a lens a lens is important, I'll come back to that in a moment. And then it, there's a, a sheet of glass at 45 degrees the other way. And the idea is that you look with your eye and you see the reflection of these three rings of light uh, uh, in your eye. Now, the, the lens is important because it focuses these three rings at infinity. And that's really helpful, you'll see why in a moment. This top sheet is, is clear glass and you can also see through it. So if there's a bright alignment star, you can look through that sheet of glass at the alignment star and you see that at infinity. So you can see both the star and these three concentric rings all focused together in the sky. And with this arrangement inside the Telrad box, if we can align the rings of the Telrad with what the camera is seeing through the telescope, then all we need to do is to move the telescope until we see through the Telrad the alignment star in the middle of the rings of the Telrad and the telescope will be pointing exactly at the alignment star and you should see it in your camera's frame. So this is what a Telrad actually looks like. It's a plastic box. It mounts onto a bracket with just got sticky pads uh, that are an angle to one another so it neatly sticks on top of your telescope. You can see here the clear glass and the lens this is the on-off switch and the adjustment for the brightness of the LED. The battery and the LED and the graticule and the mirror are all hidden inside. And then here are the three adjustment screws for changing the orientation of the mirror. And I'm going to show you now the insides of my Telrad so you can see the things you can't see in this picture. So this is my Telrad. It's not exactly as I received it. I've made a couple of changes. Uh, the Telrad comes with a rotary knob here which incorporates both the switch and the brightness adjustment for the Graticule. I've actually uh, swapped that out mainly because I damaged it, uh, but I actually have a separate switch and the rotary dial is just for the brightness now, so on off switch and rotary dial, uh, that's not how it comes. Also I've fitted these three high watt rating resistors in parallel here. Uh, they're powered from a separate DC supply from a dew heater controller and that's to gently warm the glass 
to prevent dew build up on the glass can grow dew quite readily you can see the lens through the glass there uh, and you can see on the back the three adjustment screws that move the mirror and then inside just slide this out there's a piece of foam there which is literally just to stop the battery compartment from rattling around um, there's the battery compartment two AA batteries fairly simple and they power the LED which is inside this uh, plastic block here and then on the front of the block is the actual grass cule itself I turn that on turn it up to full brightness so now I've dimmed the lights just going to zoom in here so you can actually see the grass cule and you can see that my switch turns that on and off and my dial adjusts the brightness so we'll switch it off I'll just pop the lid back on now the phone back in there is a warning on the lid about not pointing the lens directly at the sun because that will focus the sun onto the graticule and burn it so watch out for that one uh, and now we can have a go at looking through switch it on turn the graticule up to maximum brightness and now you can see what it's like looking through the glass and seeing the head-up display I'll change the brightness I'll leave it on maximum brightness and if I turn one of these adjustment dials you can see the rings moving I turn a different one moves in a different direction it's a little hard to see as I'm holding it by hand here but that's essentially the tail rad so I've set up my telescope looking through a window at a distant object I'd like to have had a, an object further away the further away the object is the less parallax you're going to get in this alignment process so there is the need to uh, fine-tune this again once you're looking at a distant star but at least this process will get you close so when you look through the tail rad you can see the rings and I've already aligned my telescope so that the center of the camera frame has got the just the top of this chimney where the TV aerial pole sticks out of the top of the chimney so you can see the rings I'm going to adjust the little screws on the back of the tail rod and you can see the three concentric rings moving and I'm going to adjust those screws and get the the point that's exactly in the center of my camera frame to be exactly in the middle of the center ring on the tail rod and now that I've done that ignoring the parallax error my telescope and my tail rad are aligned with one another. I will just check this alignment as I say when I look at a star but that should be good enough to get a star into the field of view and then I can make that final little tweak on the star to get them really nicely aligned. Of course once they're aligned you've got to be careful not to knock anything which will put off your alignment but once those are aligned you're ready to go with your tail rad. So I'm going to use this uh, artificial display of what you would see to help explain what you need to do once you've got an aligned tail rad on your telescope and let's say you've just slewed to your first alignment star and you're not seeing it in the field of view of the camera so you would switch on your tail rad and you see the rings here and also you will see the alignment star that you were trying to slew to and then all you need to do is go on the hand controller of your mount set the rate to something sensible uh, on the any HEQ5 from Skywatcher I would set it to something like 5 and then use the up and down left right arrows to slew the mount to bring these three rings uh, over the top of uh, Pollux in this case or your, your alignment star and once you're in that position with the alignment star right bang in the middle you should see that when you check back on your camera frame that you've got that bright star pretty much well centered if it's not exactly centered of course you can now move it no problem and uh, get it right bang in the center of your field of view and that, it's as simple as that that's what the tail rad does for you it solves you being lost in space if you think you really like to get yourself a tail rad and you're convinced that this is a solution for you have a look in the description field of my video where I've put a link that takes you to a site where you can get one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will do another one in due course about plate solving, which is a more advanced technique, which also solves the problem of being lost in space. But for now, that's it and clear skies.